Hello my lovely butterfly, it's France. Welcome to this new channel on Monday, week 196. It's another guided journaling session and today we're going to journal for determination. So grab your journal and let's create together. These are the products that I will be using today. As per usual, they're all listed in the description of this video, so you can find all the details right there. I'm working in my handmade Journal Monday art journal. So this one has a removable cover so that I can lay it flat on my table, no matter what the page is that I want to work on. And it's not because we're journaling for determination that we're not allowed to take precautions if we feel like doing so. I want to work with some intense color. So I want to protect my journal and I'm inviting you to do the exact same thing do what works for you, even if you're channeling for a determination. So my protection includes some tissue tape on the center of my journal to prevent the color from seeping everywhere. And to make sure that my tissue tape is going to stay in place, I'm also applying a little bit of soft matte gel from Finovar, and that will secure the whole thing. As we are about to go in with color, let's talk about choosing those colors. This is your journal, this is your secret garden, and you are the only one who's in charge of the choices that you are making as far as what color it is you want to use. So don't let a second guessing take away your time. Just grab those colors that you want to use and go with that. The type of color that we're going to use, however, is the kind of color that, well, it actually requires you to let go because you have no control on how it's going to go on the paper. We're starting by applying some water to make sure that the color will blend nicely and then going in with some spray inks, just take a deep breath and just start spraying. You have no control how it's going to go down anyway, so you might just as well just spray. You can blend it a little bit more with water if you want to, to create something that's a little bit more soft. If you want to have something that's a little bit harsher, you can leave the color just as it is. We can leave the journal to dry by itself, so if you don't have a heat gun, just leave it to dry. I'm just drying it enough to be able to move my journal without having the color go everywhere. That is, after having some drippage where I want to have it, of course. We're going to repeat that process on a little scrap piece of paper. So again, water and then using the same colors, colorizing that little piece of paper. There's no need to dry, just put it aside and let it dry by itself. 
Once our journal is dry, we can move in with the next layer. And again, this is one that requires no competence at all, except for one, and it is to let go. Because again, you will have no control as to how it will go down. We are going to use a brayer and just apply some color here and there, wherever we feel like applying it. So the only thing you need here is, well, the determination to put down some color. Other than that, just enjoy the process because you don't have any control anyway. So I like to work in a pretty monochromatic way. So I'm choosing colors from the same family. However, if you would like to have something a little bit more vibrant, you can use colors that are more contrasting. Now I do want to show off my determination on the spread and that is why I'm using the contrasting color gold because well, yes, my determination is gold. <laughs> but again, no control on how it's going to go down. The only thing that I can control is my color choice and how intense I want to have it. The more paint I apply, the more intense this color will be. We can keep on building for as long as we want. So no matter how much in love you are with the background, just do whatever makes you happy. Don't stop because you love what it is you have on the spread. I am enjoying myself brayering on some paint, so I decided to keep on going. This darker color, oh, however, I just kept it on the edges. But if you feel like going everywhere with it, well, by all means. This is your journal. Do whatever makes you happy.
Meanwhile, our scrap little piece of paper is almost dry. Whatever is left on there, you can just dab it off with a piece of a kitchen roll. Now, I do want to create a little bit more variety in that color that I have going on. So I decided to flicker on some water and then lift it up again, because this is a water reactive ink. So that will create some alterations in the color that I have going on. This is what we will be using for our focal point to build up part of our focal point. So we're going to add some crackle paste, white crackle paste from Finovar. I'm using my small rectangle stencil and that will be for later on. Crackle paste works best when you just leave it to dry by itself. So don't use your heat gun on this. Just leave it aside and leave it to dry. Don't forget to clean your stencil. However, it's always easier to clean when it's still wet. I didn't like that line of tissue tape that I had at the center because the soft matte gel was reacting as a resist. So I just applied a little bit of uh, paint on a baby wipe and wiped it on just to take out that white line that I had in the middle. So this might be a step that you can skip if you have enough color on your tissue tape. This is the same stencil and again I'm going to use that to show off my determination on the spread and I'm just going to trace some rectangles all over. 
I'm doing so with a white Posca pen to make sure that the white stays white and that it's nicely visible on top of all the layers that I already have going on. Doing something so repetitive while you are creative soul searching actually allows for the mind to wander off and to start thinking about things. And usually that's when you get ideas of what should be going on next on your spread or, well, things that you want to ponder on concerning life. So that is why I like to do these repetitive things. And because I'm working on determination here, I decided to not go in with circles just yet. I don't want my decision making to go around and around. I want it to be decisive. For the focal point, we're going to use an image. So go through your stamps and see what it is that you could use to express that determination of yours. I'm going to stamp my image on some cardstock from Paper Artsy with Memento ink because I want to colorize it with my Copic markers. And the image that I chose to use is from my Paper Artsy stamp set FP013. And I chose the bird. The raven because well a bird doesn't second guess itself when it's flying it's just flying and going it's pretty determined on where it is it wants to go i only need the raven so i don't care about the rest of the circle that will go on the spread later on but i do want to have that bird ready to be trimmed and to go on the spread I picked two Copic markers that are actually very soft in color so that my bird doesn't turn darker than it already is, but I do want it to work with the rest of the spread. So very quickly colorizing it and then cutting it out.
Our crackle paste is not ready to go just yet, so this is actually a good time to get yourself a fresh cup of tea or coffee, whatever it is you fancy, and to continue to build on our background. We're going to go in with a script stamp. I used my FP012 from Paper Artsy, and we're going to stamp it with the same color as we doodled with. So for me, that's going to be fresco finish in snowflake, just white paint. Uh, it's a chalk finish, so it's a very matte finish, and that will perfectly match my little rectangles. If you think never goes wrong when I'm journaling, well, think again. When I started to do this, I realized that something was wrong because I'm not much of a stamp cleaner and there was still the stress ink on my stamp, which was blue. And of course it completely reactivated with the paint, which turned the paint blue, but that's okay. I just cleaned off my stamp, wiped the paint a little bit, and then just continued with what I was doing. Don't forget when you're using this technique to actually clean off your stamp because if you leave the paint to dry on there well you won't ever get it off again especially in all those little details so i like to spray on water on my stamp and then continue wiping or you can just take it to the sink obviously Meanwhile, our crackle paste is dry, so we can resize it to work with the rest of the spread. If, like me, the edges of your spread are pretty dark, you might want to darken up the edges of that scrap piece of paper so that it works with the rest of the page. That little piece is actually going to be the base of our focal point and it's what's going to help us 
have the focal point actually come off the background. So I'm going back in with that stem that I selected because I actually do want to use that circle, but I want the circle to only be in the background on the spread. So I'm going to stamp that directly with archival ink and then glue the rest of my focal points on top of it. As we have all those yummy pieces of paper left over, we might as well use those to add our quote or wording to the spread. I picked a stamp from my FP02, which says je ne sais quoi. It's an expression that you use in English too. So, um, and I thought it would be very fitting on this spread because when I have to be determined, the only thing I have to remember is to follow my gut feeling because it has that je ne sais quoi that always guides me in the right direction. So I took the time to select which piece of paper I wanted to use and how it would fit on the background. And again, you need to make it work with what you have going on. So I didn't want to have that one long line of quote. Uh, I wanted to separate it in two lines and that's exactly what I did and what I use my stem positioner for.
if you like your focal point to really jump off the spread, a good trick to use is glossy accents. You just apply some on your image, on the focal point, and that will get, really give it that dimension that it needs to separate itself from the spread while still working with the background. The lighting of the studio isn't helping in this case, but when I tilt it, you can see that it's really popping off the spread because it has this extra dimension to it. Our spread needs one last element to show that we are determined of letting go of that fear of things that might go wrong when we are creative soul searching. This is our secret garden. We're still doing this for ourselves. so. Let's be brave and we're going to add splatters. I opted for black and white splatters to accentuate what's already going on on the background. And I did flip my journal so that the splatters would go in the direction of the bird flying. That's it. We did it. A spread showing just how determined we are to enjoy this process of creative soul searching. I hope you liked it. If so, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. A huge thank you to my patrons. If you too would like to spend more time with me, check out the link to my Patreon page. I'll see you back here next time. Meanwhile, don't forget to put down a layer a day. Butterfly kisses.